All right, a lot of people have been asking me about uh, how I set up the rotary jig. Now this is a uh, a jig I'm 3D printed for wallets. Uh, I do have another, which I've made specifically for pens. So, but anyways, I'm using the standard chuck rotary that came with my fiber laser. Uh, so, and you can see this, this is a little wobbly. See how it is? But that's the chuck, that's not the actual jig. So I'll show you how to correct that here in a second. So <clears throat> I've got my design set up and one of the things I'm gonna do is, you know, most people think you have to enable the rotary, but you don't. Uh, you, if you enable the rotary, then you're sure it's not gonna work. So leave that undone. Make sure that you have all your settings uh, set up the way you want to, to engrave it. And so I'm going to come over here to laser tools and you see this repeat marking. So I'll click that. Uh, right now, I, I just finished up the other side and I'll tell you about this in a moment, but I'm just putting six. So. If you had, say, like a count of 24 uh, for pens, for instance, then you can go calculate, and it will calculate out 15. Uh, we're just doing six wallets right now, so I'm going to calculate that because 60 degrees. So then if you're running towards the end of your run, and say you only have three left, you just put a three here. Don't change this 60 degree increment and run it, and this goes... Uh, clockwise. So it'll do this one, it'll do this one, and it'll rotate over to this one for the third one. So, but not this way. So you want, actually, it's a, yeah, it's kind of counterclockwise, but this rotates clockwise. So, anyways, uh, and so <clears throat> when this thing indexes over, it's got a little bit of wiggle. So you don't want to immediately start lasering. So I put a one second delay. It's actually kind of long. Uh, you can put something smaller like a 500 millisecond, which is like a half a second delay. So it just gives you uh, the opportunity for the wiggle to stop. Uh, this thing, you, you don't have to worry about the this one to five degree. Now, one of the things you need to do is your rotary has to be set up. And this actually takes information from the rotary setup page so uh, my steps per rotation is 12,800 yours might be different uh, these are all the max speeds I just leave default uh, I'll say okay now the only thing that you really need to do in uh, the rotary setup so you come over here oh sorry come over here to rotary is you want Y axis you don't want X axis you want Y so if you put on x-axis, it's, it's not going to rotate correctly. So you still don't want to enable. You leave everything off. Repeat starting point, it just goes back. We're using a chuck. Uh, you don't really have to worry much about the object diameter, the circumference, and all that kind of It doesn't take any of this. It's going based on that your rotary, your table is 360 degrees. And... So and one of the things you want to do is make sure see, when you're setting up your rotary table, uh, I, li I like to leave these loose down the bottom, line up my part just so that it's vertical, and then clamp it down, and then I can move the, uh, the image around inside of a light burn. So if I go frame here, and you can see everything's pretty lined up where I want it. Uh, or you can just do the bounds. And this gives you a, a helpful on setting it up that way. So once you get it set, you clamp it down, and you're done. So now we're gonna come back over here to laser repeat marking. And I have my six count, which I have six of those there. And we'll just hit start and it should go. You don't ever have to worry about return to zero. It's gonna return to zero anyways. But once you have it set, don't change this. You can change the count if you only have a couple to do, or if you're uh, doing all six. So now, 
if this will run. I could stop this at one, but there's a bit of fine detail in there, and I really like the white color. So I'm, I'm actually running the layer twice. And you see how there's a little bit of delay there? There's a one second delay before it starts. And if you watch closely when it indexes, again, you'll see that little wobble. See? And now it just starts. So it's pretty easy to do. You know, a lot, a lot of people get confused because of the, they think they have to enable the, the rotary. But, you know, not for this, not in Lightbird. And this works the same way in EasyCAD. So, obviously the, the uh, settings and stuff are a little different in, in Lightbird. But, and I'll show you here, once it's done, this is the last one. Once it's done, it does a full rotation back to zero. I don't know why, but yeah, so that's it. Uh, like I said, the settings are, <coughs> here it's just your count. You hit calculate, and then you don't change these for the rest of the job. Now, if I only had two left, I can just type two in there. It'll just do two. Uh, and again, the setup, you want your your uh, steps per rotation. You could reverse the direction, but you know, it, it doesn't matter if it happens to reverse or it does it here, so. And also remember, one thing you have to do in a rotor setup is select the Y axis. So, and that's, that's all you have. These things don't worry about. Uh, all these should be the way it is. You don't want to enable rotary. And then if you wanted to do a one-off, like if I wanted to start and just do it to check for alignment and everything on one piece, you know, that's what I, what I usually do. So that's it. So I hope you liked the video. See ya.